Hey guys, welcome to Fika with Rice, a podcast about life hacks, inspirational life stories, routines, and keys to success. I'm Fredrik van Hun, and let's get this Fika started. Welcome to episode 4 by Fika with Rice. This is a special episode as I meet Jonas Andrade, who is a multiple world champion in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He happens to also be my own Jiu Jitsu professor. We talk about his upbringing in the favelas in Brazil, moving to New York City without speaking a word of English to train at the world famous Unity Jiu Jitsu Academy, learning English without ever going to school and his philosophy and routines and keys to success, but also his best tips to people on finding your own purpose in your life and what success truly is. Jonas is not an English native speaker, so bear with me and Jonas during this chat. You will hear some real gold corns during this episode. This is Jonah's story. Let's go. Hello, Jonas. Welcome to the show. I'm really grateful to have you here. Um, for you guys listening, we met about a year ago in Barcelona during a jiu-jitsu seminar that I attended. And I started to train under um, jiu-jitsu under Jonas um, after that. And you're such an inspirational uh, person, uh, Jonas, to me. And I thought it would be an amazing idea to, to have you on the podcast and, and have you share your wisdom and your life stories and, and everything that you've been through uh, to help inspire other people out there. So I thought to kickstart this by asking you, what, um, what made you to decide to, to, to move to New York City when you were so young? You were only 20 years old when you moved to, to New York and you didn't speak a word of English. So when I decided to move uh, to New York, it was not like a big dream that I have on, on, on my life, you know. Actually, my big dream was to uh, compete at the world. That happened with me, I think, on the right time, on the, with the right people, you know. So I was in Sao Paulo, and the Paulo came to me and said, Hey, Jonas, when you come to, to New York to train with us and do some camping over there? I say, I don't know. I, I even don't have a... Visa for United States. Brazilians need a, a, a American visa. So you say, no, let's try your visa. Try to find your tickets and then I can help you with uh, 300 bucks. I say, really? Yeah, I can help you there. So actually, I can talk with Murilo if you can stay with us in uh, New York, if you can train with us in uh, Unity. So let's see it and say, really? Yes. Okay, let's do it. I don't think that much, hey, hey, if it's going to have good or not. No, no, no. If you think that much, you're losing your time. Do it. If something is bad, if something bad happened, you come back. You reset. We have to know which I find a yes. Um, how did you meet Paulo, Jonas? At the first time, I met Paulo and João in Sao Paulo. 2013, 2014. 2014, I think so. Why do you think Paulo selected you, offered you this opportunity and told you, I'm going to give you 300 US dollars to get you started if you can sort out the visa and the, the flight ticket and this opportunity. I don't think so. He, he, he chooses me, you know. Paulo, actually, he has a, a very good heart, you know. He likes to help everybody. He just want to find the opportunity in you to help yourself, you know. They don't, let me see if you are a guy who, who stayed the whole day sitting on the sofa, sleeping, looking to the moves and doing anything, he will not help you. So but he, if he see you uh, uh, doing hard work to, to find your dreams, to chase your dreams, he's going to help you. I, I believe he could do that for everyone, but he just have to, to find the opportunity in yourself, you know, to help you. Uh, for those that are listening, Jonas, that don't know who Paulo Miao is, who is he? Paulo Miao is actually two times a black belt world champion. Is one of the most successful guys, uh, jiu-jitsu players in the world as a black belt and also in the color red belts. No, actually, him and uh, his twin, uh, João Miao, they, let me say, they changed the conception about skinny and tiny guys compete in the open class on the Colorado belts, you know? Yes. I mean, I met Paulo myself. It's a very, it's a quiet, but very humble person. And yeah. Definitely. Actually, um, actually, they are very, very humble person. Um, yeah. I mean, I saw him sleeping on the mat in the gym, you know, in Barcelona when he came to visit last year. So yeah, he's definitely a very humble guy. 
what else? I mean, it seems that they were really inspirational, both of them, you know, to you. And they are not much older than you. I mean, I think Paolo is 29 and Joao too, obviously, because they're twins. Yeah, they are 29, both. Yeah. Like, what did they, what else did they teach you about life? It's, it's hard to say that because maybe I can forget something, you know, and don't mention that. But they taught me so much, man. Even from the beginning, when I was white belt and blue belt as well, when sometimes when you are a uh, white belt and blue belt, when you start to train with uh, stars, you feel like star, you know, but it's not like that. You have to train for yourself and don't feel like stars. This is a, is a good thing that I my, my dad actually said me and Paul reinforced me that. You don't have to look down and put your head down for other people. And also you don't have to look up, you know, and uh, feel like, hey, I'm the king, you know. You just have to look eye on the eyes, you know. So feel yourself, do your job, do your better, and let the people recognize who you are. You don't have to tell them, hey, I'm this, I'm that, you know, I do this, I'm, I want that. I'm, uh, I'm the best what play in the world. I'm the best, uh, the best what dresser. No, let the people talk about it. So if I'm doing a good dog, job, if I'm really good on that, the people are going to talk good about you. So just do your job. Work hard in silence. Learn the success. Make some noise. Do you think that that has something to do with your mantra, like with your, with your own brand, to stay humble, right? You have that on, on your T-shirts and all your apparel. Yeah, I'm trying to introduce that. So stay humble. Actually, I, I have a, a brand in Brazil that I call the one. Let, let's see if this, this phrase, this, this phrase is was, uh, actually this phrase is not, is not uh, was something adapted for me because I, I didn't see nobody using that. But was a sentence who Murilo said for, for the guys in, uh, in unit, you know. I always like to, to see him saying that. Stay humble, stay humble, stay humble, you know. Because when they, he see the guys like uh, growing up, he knows. He knows the guy we're going to put the head up, you know. No, 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 stay humble. And then that, 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 that sentence is on my mind, you know. I will always, always try to think about that. I was like, man, doesn't matter if you want the European, world, Panams, whatever, the... The interplanet tournament that don't mean you have to put it, you have to look up uh, above the head of the people and say, like, I'm the king. You know, no, 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 stay humble. Maybe you are very good in jiu jitsu, but the people who you are looking like uh, above the head say, I'm the king in jiu jitsu, they, they are good in other things. They are the best people in other things. Maybe not in jiu jitsu, but in other things, yes. Jonas, I mean, Murillo Santana, uh, I love when you do the, the imitation of him. For those that don't know, that, that are not so involved in, in, in Jiu Jitsu itself, who is he? Actually, I have, I, I have three, uh, two quotes. One is Cicero Costa, and the second one is Murillo Santana. My quote in Brazil is Cicero Costa, who is the, the, founder, the, co -founder, the founder of uh, PSLPB Cicero Costa in Brazil. And. Uh, Muriel Santana is my head coach in uh, New York, the United States. So, Murilo. Murilo is uh, one of the most incredible persons, one of the most incredible person that I found in the world, you know, because they, he, I, I, I never saw he treating somebody like with a uh, rude world. Never saw that. I never saw him doing something bad for the people, but the people respecting him as he is doing something bad. You know, he's like, a, it's not about don't, 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 don't understand me bad. So I'm talking about his posture, you know, he's like very serious. Like, I, I don't like to, I, I, I don't know how to talk about him without imitating his voice, you know. It's like, a, his posture is like, dead, you know. Always thinking about, even when he, he, he gonna joke with you, he joke like, serious, you know, hey, Jonas. So one time I was like, hey, Murilo, can I grab this? And say, no. I was like, okay. 
I was just joking. <laughs> Grab that. You know, and also he is uh, one of the best coaches uh, that I see teaching jiu-jitsu, you know? So every single thing that you ask him, he, he, he knows. So if he don't know, he's going to search and find the solution for you on the next day. So Murilo is, la, as, I, as I call him, Muripedia. Muripedia. It's like uh, Murilo plus Wikipedia, no? Mix it. He knows everything, man. He knows. He's a incredible person. So amazing coach and my good friend. I miss him, man. <laughs> he sounds amazing, Jonas. What, yeah. um, Murilo, what did he teach you about life besides being humble and staying humble? To be strong as nothing can bore your peace, you know? He didn't teach me that. Like uh, talking about, but I was seeing his actions, you know. So one example, he was mating, he was training for two hours and a half. It's not for the people who is at home. Please don't do it. That made you feel like bad, that we're going to hurt you. Maybe uh, we're going to give you hard times. But I never saw a guy doing two hours and a half training without water. Oh, wow. And without complaint. Sometimes I saw Murillo throwing because he, he was spar with uh, toughest guys, pam, 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 beating everybody. Actually, I never saw nobody beat him. <laughs> oh, wow. I never, never saw, never saw. He even was like, almost, he was almost beat, beat Murillo, I never saw. And uh, he was throwing and come back, throw and vomit and come back to the training. And I never saw he complaining about, I'm angry here, I'm uh, tired. I never, 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 never saw. In three years, I never saw him complaining. So it was not like uh, because I never saw, because I was not with him. No, no, no. I was with him almost every single day, you know, from Sunday to Sunday. So some Sundays I, 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 I live to competing, but I was not in that. But the whole week, yes. From Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, you know, was that man. He helped me like uh, no with words, but with his actions, you know. Murillo also had a way in, well, guiding you in learning English. How did you learn English, Jonas? Because you moved to, <laughs> to, to the US with a speaking word of English. How did you do? And uh, I mean, Murillo, I mean, what I've heard from, from you, I mean, he seems to be an amazing coach and he's groomed a lot of world champions, you know, including yourself. And there's a lot of, well, I would say celebrities or famous uh, yeah. people that are Maybe. training there too. So, Maybe. yeah, let's, get, go back, let's go back to the English. How did you learn English? Thanks to Murillo. I'm a good person to to watch videos, to listen podcast audios, but I'm a I don't I know that that is my weakness. I'm trying to improve bit a bit, but I, I I didn't I didn't want that. You know, I don't like to read that much. I know I have to read more. I don't like to read that much. And uh, okay, and then uh, when I came to New York, I just knew like five words in English. So let me say was uh. Goodbye, food, good morning, please. Maybe, I don't know, jiu-jitsu is an international word. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, when I came to New York, I think it was on the first day or first week, I don't remember actually, and he, he found me a, a, a private private student, you know, uh, John Schultz, and he said like, uh, hey, Jonas, now I have a private class for you. Hey, professor, how are you going to teach a private lesson if I don't know how to speak in English? I don't know even uh, how to say guard pass, uh, lasso guard, uh, hipscape. I don't know some words. I don't know. So let me say in Portuguese. Professor, eu não sei nem como dizer fuga de quadril, nem guarda de laço, I'm not. I don't know. So, <laughs> I don't care. Okay, Jonas. So I know, professor, no. Jonas, he's waiting for you. You're going to be here at 3 p.m. No, professor. No, no, no. Yeah, Jonas, I'll see you later. We're going to eat right now. We're going to lunch. Bye-bye. See you later. 
bye. <laughs> bye. And I was like, dang. And then when the guy came to me, you know, actually I I was teaching him with some mimics, you know, showing the position because jujitsu, uh, actually uh, uh, I believe jujitsu, it's better to understand if you talk, but if you open your mind, you just don't have to talk to understand. You have you have to to see the moves and try to imitate that, you know. But of course, if you have a explanation about that, why you're gonna use that grip, why you're gonna step in there, why you're gonna close your leg, why you're gonna push the guy, why you're gonna bring the guy, it's fair to understand, of course. And then I start to teach the guy, and he was teaching me some words in English, some uh, some bar parts, uh, some actions with a body, and then I start to teach him every single week, you know, two times a week, two times a week, and then I was improving my English and helping him to improve on his jiu-jitsu. So I'm very grateful for him, you know, and uh, also uh, besides that. I was learning English, uh, asking. I'm a very curious guy to ask, you know, hey, how to say that? How to say this? I'm not ashamed to to try, to be honest with you. If I don't know how to say that, that's the guys make a lot of jokes with me and say, hey, you said a wrong word. I don't care, man. I, if I said a, one, a wrong word, if you correct me, I'm going to learn that. But if you just joke me, you don't help me and also you don't help you. Help me how to say that right. And then you can make a joke with me. Let's make a deal. You can make a joke with me, but you have to take the, the right word. Okay. Say, okay. And then I was like uh, teaching. I was saying the wrong word. And the guy's like, hey, John, it's not like that. It's, ah, ah, ah. it's like this. Okay. Let, let me do it. <laughs> now I, I, I learned the world. And also you cannot make any joke anymore was like inverted the, 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 the papers, you know. Say, so, yeah, it was like that, that I learned English. Like, how to say in Brazil, natora. Okay, what natora does it mean? Like, natora is like, uh, let let me explain that. Do you know when you, when you cut a tree and you steal that kind of wood connect with the roots and just that, that outside thing? Yes. The root. I don't know how to say that in English. But what's the end of the tree? Almost in the roots, you know? We call that in Brazil, tora. is a... Uh, the, the kind of wood. And uh, when you come with uh, the hammer, even with the cutter, that is the, the hardest part to cut because the, the whole thing is on the bottom, you know? The, the rest of the things, it's a bit soft. The begin, it's the hardest one. So to cut that, you have to bang, bang. Yes. Bang. It's going to be more power that you put in there. So that's what you say, not Torah. You not learn Torah. by, it's, it's like you, you're going to learn by, you're going to learn by the hardest way, you know? I see. Instead, instead, to, instead to study, you, you, you decide to learn not Torah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand. Okay, sort of like okay, instead of going to school to learn, like learn the yeah, traditional learn, way, you have to learn. Learning yes. you have to learn it from the uh, the the rough the rough way. So yeah, speak. the rough way, the rough yes. way. As the right word to say, yeah. Well, did you way. have a system, Jonas? Like where you wrote down after class, like the words in English, or you just remembered it? Yes, I like to. To give away for the words, you know, I like to talk with people and introduce the words. Okay. So every single thing that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about, I like to introduce that words, you know, like even in Spanish. So if if I learn a, a a word today, so I will try to use this word today. That's a good advice. Yeah, because. If I, I, I let you to try that tomorrow, maybe if I can forget, you know, but if I use it today, if I, if I see that works, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it today and I'm going to still memorize it, you know, I'm going to stay on my mind. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one that I like to do. I think it's good. I think so too. Yeah.
I like to to find a path for the world, you know. Ah, oh, that's a great advice. I mean, that's a great advice for people I, that want to learn a new language. I think a lot of people that are learning a new language are too shy or ashamed, you know, to to really utilize it. You know, make it's mistakes. The, it's the hardest part, you know, the shame. So if you are shy to to try, maybe your whole life you're gonna be shy. I think so. You just know if you're gonna keep something or if you're gonna achieve something or if you're gonna do something right or not if you try it. If you don't try it, you don't know. I agree. I agree, Jonas. Um, I'm, yeah. I have a hundred percent the same attitude when it comes to you know me speaking French and Spanish and all the other languages that I speak. I know I'm not completely fluent, but I just keep going. And if I'm making mistakes, it's okay. Somebody yeah. will yeah. correct me. You know. That's the, the 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 big deal. Yes. Jonas, when you were a kid, you know, when you were young in Brazil, you were playing football. You know, as a little kid, mm -hmm. what were your dreams? What did you visualize? I was up with my mom. I made a, a, a group with uh, my mom and my girlfriend. And uh, maybe my girlfriend was not believing what I was saying, you know. And then my mom said to her the same thing that I said to her a uh, 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 time ago. I always like to have my own money, you know. I don't like to, to have the money from my mom because she don't have that much. I don't like to have the demand from my, my daddy since he, he has not that much. And uh, and then I I, I said to her, hey, Martina, uh, I was working since I was nine years old in Brazil. So I was not look, doing a, a very hard job, very hard job to hurt myself that I can uh, not, I can be, my parents can be judged by that. No. I was doing a job, simple job, but even I was doing some job to have my own money, you know. My big dream that I, when I was a kid is to be a, a, a mechatronic engineer, you know. What is that? It's like uh, when the guys work with uh, robots, they work with uh, automatic things, you know. Since I was a kid, I, I, I had uh, the dream to work, but to have more money than, uh, than specialize in one thing. Let me explain better. I had a dream to, to work on those things about engineer. I was fascinated to see like mechanic, -y, electronic things. You know, I was like, If you see I'm teaching, the whole time I'm talking about the mechanic, about the body, and uh, I like that. I like it. And then when I, I realized that uh, I don't like that anymore, I was like, okay, let's try another thing. And then I start to play football. When I was playing football, I was, uh, I was actually working with my, my cousin. And uh, was, I was 12 years old. And then uh, I, I realized that... Uh, After that, I was like, I don't want to play football anymore. I was like jump, you know, jumping, jumping, jumping. And I always working for my things and say, hey, so if I want to have my own money, I have to find my path. I have to, to create something. I have to find something. And then I still working, but not more with a, with a big, big path. I was just... I was preferring to thinking about a small path than a big, uh, than a, uh, a small path than a big path to find that. And then I was gonna put like uh, another path. Let me say uh, uh, stairs. On the stairs, you go step by step. You go the step one, after the step two, after the step three, after the step five. Okay. So I still work on that, uh, uh, saving some money saving for that, saving this, saving that. And then uh, I found jiu-jitsu. And then when I was wiped out, uh, if I say that to you or even for somebody, one, how I said one day in class and the guy was left, not here in Barcelona and another place, when the guy's asking me, when you decided to be professional? And I say, I was wiped out. 
And the guys didn't believe. So yeah, I, I, I decided to be a professional guy in jiu-jitsu when I was white belt. No, I can't believe, yes. When I was white belt, I decided that. And then I have some money saved because I was working before, you know? Yes. I always like to save some money and also to have my own money. And, uh, and my mom, that's what I, uh, I said uh, in the beginning. I was talking with my mom to see if my, my girlfriend can, uh, can, uh, can link both, you know? Since I was a kid, I, I like to have my own money, to save my own money, to don't waiting for somebody to help me on that, you know? I like to work by myself and to, let me say if, if somebody can help me, okay. But if not, I, I was still doing that, even with my own money. And then when I we decided to be a professional, I came to to Sao Paulo. I was expanding my money, banana, banana, and the money was done. And then was uh, when the the thing happened with my knee surgery. And then I came back to zero, you know. And then uh, I I uh, I had a knee surgery. I was like shy you know i was, was like afraid try. yeah let's talk about the knee knees in knee surgery a bit jonas because that's an interesting story because you were just 17 right and you didn't have a lot of money and uh, you barely had money for food you were saying um, yeah and uh, what happened there because i know there's an interesting story around that you got a phone call one day, right? Because you had a knee surgery when you were 17 that you had to do um, when you started to build yourself up in jiu-jitsu. And yeah. you, you were fighting an opponent every weekend. I know this yeah. is a story you've been telling me before. And a mom called you, right? Yeah, his mom, his mom called me uh, to help me. And then I came to, to, uh, to her gym that his husband, uh, her husband was the, the, the head coach in that. And she helped me a lot, man, to, to give me, to save money, to get my knee surgery, to had everything, you know. She was like an angel of my life since she, she didn't know me, you know. I think she knew me just about uh, to see me on the tournament, but she didn't know about my career about my how how I, I am as a person but she decided to help me that's why uh, I I was I, I'm grateful to her for every single day on my praise I, I I pray to her you know to to God bless her every single day because she she was amazing my life man was one of the hardest things that happened on my my entire life, you know. I had uh, worse things, bad things, but this one was one of the was not because was the worst one, but for my career that I, I I depend of my body. So as a as a builder needs a a, a toes to construct some building to build some building. I need my body to build my my achievements, to build myself, you know, to achieve my goals. So that for me was like a shock, you know, and I felt like so bad that I couldn't train. Yeah, like it's an amazing story, you know, that this, um, this woman just showed up in your life. Um, and I mean, it's incredible that it was one of your opponent's mom as well, that that wanted to help you out. Yeah, it was, it was not just a person who found, who popped it up here in my life and helped me. She was the mom of one, one of my toughest opponents, you know. I was like uh, fighting against him like uh, almost every single week, almost every single weekend. Why do you think she wanted to help you, Jonas? Why do you think she reached out? For sure, she has a good heart. Second one, she, I think she felt like, uh, okay, he could be my son. My son could uh, have the same, uh, the same problem, and uh, maybe 
No, maybe, but I would like to have a person or a man of John who can help my son with that stuff, you know? So she was putting that, what I said in the beginning. She felt that, that kind of love for the people that she, who don't know, you know, is the, the, the hardest love. It's easy to love a people who you know. It's easy. The hardest one is to love a people who you don't know. You don't know them. You don't know the karate. You don't know anything about them. But it's you love them as a person, as a as a brother, as a sister. You know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I totally agree. I she chose to to help you and uh, and 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 give that love to you without even knowing your your personality and character. I mean, yeah. she just. She just saw you on the mat in the tournament fighting her son. Me. She just decided to help me. She just did this. What did your mother think of that when that happened? Because, I mean, you guys <laughs> couldn't afford a need a surgery and this could have ended your, your career completely. Yeah, actually, my mom was actually helping me, saying like, hey, my son, you, I know you have to... To find a path, I know I want to support you, but in the same way she was on the on top of the wall, you know, on the on the on the on the on the on the middle line. She was like, I am helping him to find his path, and also I want to hear something like a concrete thing, you know, like study to has his own job, like com- not not like a common job, like uh, work on the office, work on the as an engineer work as a lawyer, work as a whatever. I know she wants that for me, and I know she wants to help me as well, but she was on the middle line, you know? I can feel that. She was like uh, with that kind of doubt on her mind, you know? She was helping me, and now the same the same time, she was like, hey, you have to find this here, Let's try to study this, try to study that. I don't like to, and another thing was uh, listen to this podcast. So study, because study is good. Study is good. So actually, I don't like to say study mathematics, study, study biology, study science, study art. Oh, no, no. Study what you like to study or what your job asks you for study, you know? Let me say your job is as, as an interpreter. You have to study about the, the students. You have to study about the language. You have to study about the local. You have to study about the place. You have to study about that. My job is jujitsu. I have to study jujitsu to still improving for my students. You know, if I, as a as a as a business guy with a with a manufacturer, I have to study price. I have to study mathematics. I have to study about uh, logistics. I have to study about uh, deliveries. I have to study about packages. I have to study about another things, you know. Always you have to study. That don't mean I have to go for the, the specific school to be a, let me say, a successful guy. No, you can study about your stuff, you know, and uh, work for that. Find your path. Be happy and try to do your best what you love. Yeah, no, I, I love that, Jonas. I know that uh, you, you make it very simple, you know, and it's very impressive to hear that from you, you know, like from a person who barely went to school, you know, and you, you didn't even go to university either, you know, you didn't have that opportunity. But you make this wisdom sound so easy, Um and it's completely true, you know, like if you want to be an entrepreneur, well, I mean, you need to learn everything about business. And when you have some free time, you just have to keep learning because if That's you're not true. learning, you're just standing still. If you want to become a professional and you're professional in jujitsu, well, you have to be training jujitsu. You need to be watching video, videos. You need to be learning anything you can about it. To be a good coach, you have to be a good student. That's a good thing. That's a good advice. What, what's, a, what's the role of a teacher for you, Jonas? I learn more with you guys than I teach. For me, it's a pleasure to be there, you know, and uh, seeing the guys improve bit a bit, day a day, you know, and uh, feeling like, uh, hey, man, 
today I learned a new thing. So it's a simple thing, just a step back. But it was something that you didn't know in your whole life, you know. You didn't do in your whole life this, uh, let me say, I exercise with your arm. You never did it. But today you discovered that and you feel like, wow, today I learned this. It's a simple thing. It's a very simple thing. But maybe that changed your, the way how you think. The, they changed, uh, that changed your day. Maybe you had a worse day. Maybe you have a hard things in your life. And then you came to the gym, you learned a new thing. And you felt like, wow, you breathe deep. You, have a, you had a, a, a deep breath. Wow, I got it. You know, that's what I, I think as a, a teacher, as a coach, I felt that it's more learn than teach. So you would say that, your number one role as a teacher is actually to learn. You would say so. That's interesting. Yes. I learned to teach you, I have to learn. Yes. And then we came back to be a good coach, I have to be a good student. So I'm just teaching you what I learned. Yes. And then something that you can teach me today, I can teach you some, some, some bar tomorrow. Of course. And that's the point, you know, protein. Yeah, it's like a cycle. Jonas, I'm curious to know, how, how do you approach life? What makes you wake up every morning? I know we have our get-together, 7.30 a.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, but what, what makes you wake up every morning? So I, I had to come back on the same history. So when I was in Sao Paulo, I had a I guy with me, was Rafael, and actually he is from the same city, uh, from the same hometown as me. And uh, when I had to do a knee surgery, I was very upset that I couldn't train, that I couldn't compete. I saw everybody training, take pictures, uh, having hard trainings, and I could not do that. I was very upset. And one day I said to Rafael in Fortaleza, hey man, I just want to come back to train, you know. I felt so bad. I'm depressive a bit. So I want you to come back to do what I love. That is Jiu-Jitsu. I want you to come back. I want you to come back. And I swear, God, I'll never complain anymore about if I'm tired or not. If I... Okay. And then one day I was in uh, Sao Paulo. And I was in front of a very hard... Uh, 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 very hard difficulties, hard times in Sao Paulo. I was not without food because I have some pasta, but was like pasta cooked in water with salt. That's it. Cooked with water and salt. That's it. Was not that much, but was not was not that that worse, but was not that good. Was that the same shit, you know? And I was very upset because I don't have any money to to keep me up in Sao Paulo. And one day I was crying on my on my bed. And uh, I was tired as well, sore. My body was sore. And I said, and Rafael asked me. Rafael was in Sao Paulo as well with me. We moved uh, to Sao Paulo. And he said me. He asked me, Hey Jonas, what's happened? Hey man. And I said. It's a shit life, you know. I can't grow up. I can't have nothing. I'm here for a year. Uh, the only thing that happened with me was wasting my money. I don't have any money. I don't. I cannot see what I'm doing good, what I'm doing bad. I cannot see my achievements. I cannot, you know. And he said, "Hey, one thing. Did you remember when you said me, hey?" I'll never complain anymore since I had my knees when you have your when you have your knee surgery when you can come back to training. Do you remember that? And I was like, shit, dang, that's true. Man, I stand up from the bed and I was like, I cannot complain. I swear to God, I cannot complain anymore. Let's go. And then I came to train, you know. And then 
actually I, I wake up like with a good moon, you know, but when I felt like uh, my body sore on the morning or tired and I was like asleep, sleepy on the morning, I think about that. I say, hey, man, I promise it. I cannot complain. Let's go. I'm still talking with myself, you know. I think I have two journals on my mind. One one is not working, the other one is awake. Yeah, no, like, that so it wake seems up, that, wake up. You yeah. can do better. Let's go, let's go. You can do better. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It <laughs> seems that you have um, the knee injury really helped you, you know. It really yeah, helps you was, still to keep was, motivated. Was a bad thing. Was a bad thing that came to help me, you know. There are good saying in Brazil that we say like uh some bad things come to good things. Yes, that's a really good saying. It's a good saying. And uh, another thing, I was saying this to my girlfriend, Martina. I said that to her on Thursday, but that happened to me on Wednesday. I had a, a, a program to, to do some... Uh, 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 gym stuff, you know, after training. And then my plan for the day was like squat, back squat, uh, pulley, back squat, pulley, uh, bunch press, and that lift. Okay. I did the bunch press, I did the back squat, I did the, I, I did the back squat, I did the, the, the bunch press, but I didn't do the pulley. And also the, the deadlift. And then when I started the deadlift, was the the, the the weight that I usually put it to to lift, you know? But I felt so heavy, so heavy. I was like one. My repetitions is four, 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 four repetitions and uh four four sets, you know, with a max, maximum maximum weight. I actually I, I weigh like a 60, 66 now, and then I put on the deadlift the 100, 112 kilos, you know, on the deadlift. It's almost a double of me. So okay, I was felt so heavy the weights that I did one, two, three, four, and the fourth one, I said to myself, no, I'm not doing it today. I not do it today. And I came to the pulley. And I did one, two, three, four pulleys. And then I was thinking, no, I cannot let a uh, gym bar beat me. No, let's come back to that. And then I did one, two, three, four. Okay, that's done for today for the deadlift. And then I came to the pulley. And I did one, two, three, four. And I say, man. What is two more? Two more. Let's go. Two more. And the Jonas one was dead. And the other one was awake. You know, was alive. So like, let's go, man. Two, two. What is two? You just do four and then you're going to rest. Okay, let's go. And then I came back. I did one, two, three, four. And I was like, okay, it's done for today. It's done. It's done. It's done. Come back. And then I came to the pulley and I did two sets of pulley. One, two, three, four. I rested and then I one, two, three, four. And then I was like, that's good for today, you know? And then my other, my the other side of my mind, hey man, you did three, but you didn't do four. So maybe you can lie for yourself. You did four, but you didn't. You have to come back there, lift the weights and finish your set. Do or die. <laughs> Where do you think that comes from, Jonas? I don't know. Maybe from my mom. Man. Yeah. Maybe from my mom. Yeah. So you do or die. Do or die. Do or die. Do or die. Yeah. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? The time is going on. The time is passing. The time is passing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And I was like, okay, I do it. I will go to do it. And then when I get the bar, man, I did one, two, three. The first three, I swear, I was lifting the weight, but my mind was not in that. I was lifting the weight. And then when I realized, I was like, 
hey, man, I'm on the fourth one already. So let's go. The fourth one is the, the last one. Let's go. Go. Finish it. And, and I felt like, uh, you know, that feeling of, I did it. I did it. Yeah, I, I completely know that feeling. Uh, it's a good one. <laughs> you feel accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. It's simple things that if you talk in public with many people, maybe 80% of the people, oh, that's a shit, you know? It's a, you know, but for yourself, that's like a comps, you know? You did that. You, 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 you are overcoming yourself day a day. Jonas, I mean, we can't, we can't put this under the table. You've been the, you've been the world champion seven times, European champion five times, and you're only 22 years old. Three, What? 23. 23 now, okay. Yeah. What keeps you motivated? I know I have to, to do 10 steps to achieve the, the top. But for now, I'm thinking just on the first step. You know, I have to do this step. After this, I'm going to think on the second one. After the second one, we're going to think on the third one. I don't think on the 10th step. That's why I keep me motivated about life. Uh, this way was the way that I found to don't be like a uh, deception about life. You know, sometimes when you think too much, like on the 10th step, on the middle, you didn't find the things that you want. And now you are like afraid to keep going, you know. Hey, man, I don't know if I'm gonna keep the tenth step. No, no, think now. I like to think about the first one. After the first one, I feel so happy. I have more energy for the second one, you know. And if I don't keep the second one, I still with the energy because I'm happy about the first one, you know. I'm not thinking about a tenth one. I'm thinking about the first one. Hey, man, I'm very happy here. If I couldn't, if I could achieve the first one, if I fell on, if I fall on the second one, I can still have the energy for the first one. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Let's go for the second one. And then when I give it the second one, I have more energy from the first one, from the second one that I could overcome myself. And then I go for the third one. And then I kept it going. That's my motivation on day by day, you know. That's so keeping me motivated. So goal setting for you, like, is really splitting down the goals into mini goals. And you just focus on the mini goals um, and until you reach success. Yes. That's yes. a really good, uh, that's a very good advice. So I think this way, I, I, I didn't study about that, about psychology, but for me, that give you less options to be frustrated, to frustrate I, yourself. Yes. So if you have 10 steps, if you fall in 10, you're going to feel frustrated for your... If you, No, let me say. You're thinking about, I have uh, 10 steps on one side and one step on this side. If I fall, I fell on this one, I'm frustrated about one step. I can still try. If on the 10th one, you fall it, you fall on the first one, what are you going to think about the 10th one? Man, if I didn't keep the first one, what's going to happen on the, the 10th? It's true. It's true. You know, it's better if you keep your attention here. One, 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 one. After this, okay, we're going to show you the second one. And then third, and then fourth, and then this guy here on the tenth one is still like, my life is a shit, you know. I yeah. cannot achieve that. I know I'm, I'm a, I'm terrible, you know. I cannot do that, you know. Yeah, that's what happened. That's what I see in life, you know. People who was putting more energy in a uh, hundred steps, if they felt like maybe. They cannot keep the, the, the 101 ease. Maybe not, you know. I prefer to put it step by step and still split, you know. And sharing day a day, motivate day a day to get energy from the, the, the steps that I keep it. Yeah, I mean, the goal becomes more digestible in that, 
yeah. in that way, you know. Yeah. The same way as I like to teach jiu-jitsu. I like to teach step by step. They think that I will be playing jiu-jitsu is the things that I think in, uh, I think in about life. They think that I believe in life. What has jiu-jitsu taught you about life, Jonas? Or persistence. Persistence. You mean that persistence pays persistence off? Persistence or... and resistance. Jiu-jitsu, it's not for who is just good in jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu is for who is who try to be good in jiu-jitsu and has persistence. If you want to be good in jiu-jitsu, you have to train jiu-jitsu and be patient. You don't have to be good in jiu-jitsu at the first time, you know? You pop it up here, boom, I'm good in jiu-jitsu, so I'll be the Marcus Bushisha. No, 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 no. You have to be persistent. So, in the beginning, you don't have any sponsor. If you don't have persistence, bye-bye. Do you think that could be applied to any profession? Like, say, you're an engineer, yeah. businessman, yeah. or student? Yeah, no, just for jiu-jitsu, but for life. So actually, I believe jiu-jitsu is like a lifestyle, you know? So everything from jiu-jitsu can apply in your life. You never know if you are able to do something or not if you don't try it. It's true. The same thing on jiu-jitsu, yes. You want to be meted because you did a mistake. You have to come back home, think, try, review, try, start, review, try, start, review. And then you come back to the gym again, and then you try. And the guys will be meeting on the same thing. Dang. You come back home, study, play some videos on YouTube, watch some fights, pump, 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 come back. And then you'll also be meeting on the same submission again. About uh, fighting and so on, and in general, Jonas, how do you respond to stress? Drink coffee. <laughs> okay. That's true. That's yeah. true. It calms That's you true. down then to drink coffee. That's why I drink coffee and uh, Monique was asking me, Monique is the, the girl who worked with us on the, on, the, on the gym. She asked me, I said like, hey, I'm very stressful here. I'm going to drink coffee. And she's like, the caffeine don't make you more stressful? I say, no, the caffeine may make me calm down. That's interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you another question regarding advices, Jonas. Let's say that you could go back in time and you could meet your 16-year-old self. What advice would you give him? The only thing that we're going to tell to my 16-year-old Jonas should be like, be more respectful. Okay, that's interesting. Be more respectful. Yeah, because if I was like more respectful when I was 16 years old, I should not be rated that much and also I don't have many injuries. Actually, mm -hmm. when I was, yeah, when I was white belt and a blue belt, I didn't respect nobody. I was like in respect with the guys while I was calling the black belts to fight. I was like, hey, come to fight, come to fight. And then, man, I don't have the level to, to beat the guys, but I still fighting a guys with words, you know? And the guy was hitting me, man, bam, 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 bam. And I was like, my body was totally broken. <laughs> and I was like getting injuries, you know. If I should tell me one advice, was that. When you were young, Jonas, why did you want to fight these people? Why did you want to challenge them, so to speak? What was it deep inside you that you were battling with? Or The problems of life uh, made me that, you know. When I was nine years, years old, my my mom broke up with my father and then uh, I had many problems with my father as well and I was was not talking uh, with him for two years and then my mom sent me to sent me to downtown in uh, in Ceará on my on my state and then I was in there you know I had nothing I was I was just with my 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 grandmother i i didn't have my mom and then after this uh when i came back to my hometown fortaleza i was i i was better on my mind but I, on this school i was worse and then when i discovered my my daughter had some problems with a guy who was like a she was like a, a, a sexual abuser, you know, and then makes me my, my head up. So messed, and I was like, I want to do something, you know. 
And then when I was inside the tatami, I was like putting all my, all, all the things that I have inside me, you know, I was like, I want to fight hard. I don't know. I don't care about this guy cannot beat me, but they still can beat me. Because today I can think Jiu-Jitsu is not about angry. It's not about angry. If come angry to turn Jiu-Jitsu, you're going to be tepid. Don't care about how angry you are. If you come angry, you're going to get out relaxed. Come with a mind clean. Even if you have problems in your job, in your life, come to train Jiu-Jitsu. It's a, like a therapy. It's like therapy. It's not to make you more angry. It's like therapy. That's what I think uh, I had those things, you know. I was like to putting out my things, you know. Today, I think I should be more respectful. But on the same time, I think that helped me, you know. Maybe if I didn't put that out when I was 16, I still with that inside of me, you know. And today, I could, uh, today I could think, I could think on the past, I don't have uh, any any bad feelings about my father. I don't have any feelings about my mom because she sent me to downtown. I don't have anything bad inside me about those things, you know. I could forgive that. I could forgive. And also the guy who, who made that with my, my sister, I could, I don't want to see him personally. I don't want him, to see, see him personally because it's my, it's my wish, you know. If, if I could, cross the street you don't see him if I could go for the north street you don't see him I'll, I prefer but I forgive him you know I forgive him I don't have bad feelings about him but I don't want to see him so it seems that you you were going through a lot when you were younger not only the the lack of, of food and, and money but you also you were saying that your father left home so you were upset with him and then your mom sent you away as well and then you found out that your your sister was sexually abused so there was a lot of things going on in your life and it seemed that a lot of the frustration and the anger that you had inside yeah. you what less what was let loose on the mat so to speak and that's why maybe you were just wanted to challenge anyone on the mat yeah yeah and, and it became a therapy for you uh, and yeah. you started to feel better. I think that was the best therapy for me, man. You know what, yeah. Jonas? It's not you're not the the first one. I've read a lot of people that come out from jail and stuff like that and have psychological yeah. issues that start jujitsu, start to train jujitsu, and suddenly their life changes. Yeah, that's what I like to say. Jujitsu, not just jujitsu, but uh, sports save life. I think it's not only jiu-jitsu, it could be any sport. Not only jiu-jitsu, no, jiu -jitsu. if I say just, just only jiu-jitsu, I would be like, uh, I should be very guilty, very, very pity, you know, but no, sports, sport in general save life, saves life. What would you tell, like, let's say I'm a 25-year-old guy, you know, like I'm not doing any sports or anything. Why would what would you tell me? Twenty five. Let's say I'm twenty five years old. I'm like just working. I'm I'm not training. I'm not doing any sports. Why should I do sports? What would you tell me if you could meet me? First thing, you're gonna help you in your healthy. So second thing, that's gonna help uh, you on the in your mind, you know. And third thing that can help you in your whole life since you try to find the good things in your sport, not just in jiu-jitsu, but your, in your sport, you know, uh, about the improves. So you can find the improve in your, in your job since you are practicing some uh, sport, like, hey, man, I could see, I was doing, let me say, boxing. I was doing boxing, so I didn't know how to jab. I don't know how to crunch. I don't know how to hang. 
I don't know how to skip, but yes, now I know. So the same thing can put in your job. So if you want to be promoted for the next level, you know, so I was before on this job, but I want to be promoted. So the same thing that I did on the box that I didn't know how to punch, how to do this, how to do that. I can improve in how in uh, learn how to do this on my job to be promoted, you know. So you think a lot of the, the things that we learn in sports and jiu-jitsu, boxing, any type of sport is completely transferable to any yeah. profession, office yeah. work or anything. The, the only thing that I believe in jiu-jitsu is different about the not sport because it's more complex, it's more, more complex, you know. Okay. Why should someone try jiu-jitsu, Jonas? I mean, not, not promoting jiu-jitsu, you know, but why should someone do jiu-jitsu? Many things. It's hard to say one in special, you know. Personal defense, healthy, mind chain, equilibrium, uh, the cycle, uh, another thing, man. It's have many words to say, you know. It's like a confidence, friendship. So you're going to know how to be submitted 10 times and after this you're gonna hug your friend you know and say thank you and how when you saw this in your life the guy was beating you 10 times six and after this you smile to me and say thank you yeah it's uh it's not many sports where you, where no. you have this you felt good to be submitted you know because on the next day that we're gonna help you. You're gonna come back home and you're gonna start. And so I have to do this. You don't be submitted ten times. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I completely understand. I completely understand, John. I mean, I think that requires a lot of maturity as well. I think it requires that you have a, you don't have a big ego. I think it requires that you're personally aware, you know, as well about in um, one about of anything most, because you can't the, win every match, right? Yeah, and one of the big things that we're gonna learn in jiu-jitsu is patience. Okay. If you don't have patience in jiu-jitsu, sorry, you have to create that. You have to develop that in yourself. That's why they say jiu-jitsu is for everyone. Jiu-jitsu really is for everyone. Every single position have a, some. Uh, you can adapt. You know. I think jiu-jitsu absolutely. I mean, I've seen heavy people slim short, long, all types of sizes, you know, yeah. uh, on the mat. So I definitely agree on that. And I think patience is, um, it's a great lesson, you know, because that's something that you can apply to anywhere in life. That's yeah. true. I would like to talk some of some of your routines, Jonas. Um, how does the last two hours of your evening look like every day? Do you have like a chill down routine before you go to bed or? Actually, when I, Two hours for bed. Uh, 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 I have dinner. Uh, I like to see some things funny on Instagram. That the 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 funniest guys in Brazil, my city. Okay. I like to see those, you know, to to laugh a bit. And also, when I when I don't talk with the guys with uh, ego, when I ego and uh, John is on his room, I like to see some move. Or even talk with them when, when they are here in the room, you know, the live room. I still talk with them. That's my two hours before I sleep. Okay. I feel, take a shower and then go to the bed to reset a new day to achieve our, our goals. Yeah, John and Igor, they are the ro your roommates, right? Just for those that are, are not, that don't know about them. John and Igor are my, my roommates, my, team, my, my, my roommates. How about the first hour in your day, Jonas? When, from the moment you, you start your day, how does the first hour look like? Do you have a specific morning routine that you follow? Actually, I, I like to, to wake up. The first post that I text is my, my girlfriend. <laughs> I say good morning, how she, she slept. So if it was good or not, I brush my teeth, take a shot, of course, drink my cough. <laughs> And go to the gym. I don't like to eat a breakfast in the morning. Okay. I like to do a intermittent fasting. Yes. And yes, it's simple. 
How's that working out for you, the intermittent fasting? Do you, have you seen any changes in your body, the way you feel or anything? No, I, to be honest, I, I didn't had pay attention on uh, how that was good for me, you know, but I just like to do the intermittent fast because before I was feeling too full to train, you know, sometimes when I was explaining some positions about, let me say, guard in jiu-jitsu, I was like full. And I couldn't show the position good. Sometimes I, the, when the guy touch my belt, I feel like oh, I'm gonna vomit. You know, I think I have a slow, slow digest, digest. Yes. You know, uh, and then uh, I, I decided to do the intermittent fast until like uh, 1 p.m. Sometimes 2 p.m. I like to do. I don't feel like weak. I don't. I like. Because I did, I did an intermittent fasting for over a year, you know, Jonas, and I, I mean, I felt more alert, more. I had more focus in the morning. I felt lighter, you know. I loved that feeling. But the big consequence that I learned was that I had to drink like three coffees, like before one p.m. because I was yeah. starving, especially since I'm training every morning, you know. Yeah, maybe, 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 yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the thing that I said about uh, RLT, yes, because there's an explanation about that. Because instead of your body to be paying attention to something, your body are, uh, put all the attention to, to burn the, the uh, hydrates, you know, the proteins. They are, they are burning that instead of focusing on something. Yes, absolutely. Jonas, uh, I just had a few more, like, Short questions for you. Like uh, one is, what is the the best or the most worthwhile investment you have made lately? It could be in money, time, or energy. Was it some Paul man that I invest like uh, almost nine, ten hours of my day just uh, training, you know? And also I was studying, and uh, I didn't have many time to to live. To say that for me, jujitsu is like. Uh, lifestyle for me if i'm training i'm uh, leaving you know so it wasn't some part that i was uh spreading like nine ten hours you know on the mats and also studying jiu-jitsu watching mats was that so you would say like investing the the training hours to yeah it made developed and help create the person that you are today that helped yeah. me as well to go back on the food, um, Jonas, I, I know that you're, you're not only doing intermittent fasting, but you're also a vegan. Uh, I mean, I don't know a lot of professional athletes that are vegan, but have, have you seen any changes in your performance or your anything in your life when it comes to switching to a vegan diet? How I said to you, my my digestion is it's slow, you know. So with uh, a meat, uh, animal meat, so that was like slowly, very slowly. And uh, for me, the, the, the vegetarian one was like better because can, uh, can have the, di the digest like uh, fast. It's still slow, but a bit faster than it was before. But, and also to cut weight, you know, that I, I always that. have to, to do for some comments. Jonas, you said that you also have a business uh, in Brazil. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It's a small business that we have uh, in Brazil. Uh, actually, I don't like to to keep that because Brazil is too hard to make business with uh, some uh, imported material, you know. And uh, actually, when the, we produce that, they take so long, they charge too much, and they they make everything to mess up your business. But I I, I have a we call the one for call. So it's a company from me and my friend Talson. So we're trying to grow up that, but was growing up, but in Brazil, it's hard to produce more. So when you start to produce more, the guys try to put you back, you know, to don't produce more. They don't want to see you growing up. I know the world is like that, but in Europe, it's easier to do. So that's what I, I'm thinking to bring uh, to Europe, you know, and start to let in Brazil. Okay, that sounds exciting, Jonas. I mean, let me know if you need any help with uh, with anything. Happy to to share some insights or or some of my experience. See if I can help you. Um, where can people find more about you on the internet, Jonas? Where can they go and say hello to you? 
uh, on my Instagram. Okay. <laughs> what What's your Instagram? Um... Is uh, at at Jonas Andrade Seven. All right. We're gonna link to to that. So it's at Jonas Andrade Seven on Instagram. We're gonna link to that on our website as well, so so people can check you out, see what you're up to, all the the medals that you're winning and so on. Um, Okay, great. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here, uh, Jonas, and, and talk to you and get to know you more. And and for all the wisdom you've been sharing with us, with me, and also the listeners, you know. Um, Thank you been, very much. Uh, it's been a blast. Well, it was a pleasure for me. Thank you. Um, do you have any last parting words you would like to share with the audience, Jonas? Any last experiences, wisdom, life hacks, tips that you would like to, to spread? Try to find a try to find a love, and uh, what you do, and you're gonna feel better, you know, when you are doing th that things. So, since you are doing something that you don't like, try to si find something good on those things, you know. Try to think. Let me say, if you work in an office and you don't like to work on the office, some days, you know, you feel lazy, you feel tired. No, oh, it's a shit working here. Try to find a good part. So some people don't have a job. You have a, you have a job. Try to be grateful. Uh, try to be grateful those, for those things uh, that you have, for who surround you. Find the good things. Even when the people who surround you are bad to you, so that people help you, that people help you to grow up. If they, they, they try to mess up your life, it's because you are doing something good. That's a really good advice, Jonas. Yeah, the people don't throw any rocks or even a wood on the tree that don't have any fruits, you know? I never saw nobody throwing a rocks or with a wood throwing on the on the on the tree who, who just have leaves. I never, never saw. That I that I love that I love that saying, Jonas. And I think that's one of the things I appreciate the most with you, you know, like Again, you know, like you didn't have the opportunity to, to go to school extensively and uh, you have very simple life expressions that make you understand concepts very easily. And it's true. I mean, yeah. you know, I think people are not, I think they are not grateful enough. I don't think they are appreciative enough for the opportunities they are giving. And I think you can definitely twist it, you know, and look at the glass half full yeah. instead of half empty, you know, and, and it's going to change your life. And because if you start to focus on the positive things, the things that you really appreciate and love, you're going to feel much happier in life, you know? Yeah, that's true. And it's true what you're saying. Like, if you envision yourself as a tree with fruits, um, people will definitely try to throw rocks to have the yeah. fruits fall yeah. down, you know? Because the people don't just don't try to, uh, the, the only place that the people will don't try to mess up your life is when you are inside the box. Yeah. When you are inside the box, you are not doing nothing. If you are not doing anything, nobody mess up your life. But when you start to open the box, bye bye. For sure, we're gonna we're gonna find many people to mess up your life. Now it's been a pleasure, Jonas. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank I you, Jonas. You Have a nice day. You too, <laughs> Jonas. Well, uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you for listening to Fika with Rice. I hope you enjoyed the show. Who do you want to have on our show? Let us know by sending me an email at frederick at absoluteinternship.com And before you go, if you like this conversation, don't forget to subscribe to our show on iTunes or Spotify to get to listen to more inspirational stories and life hacks. We'd really appreciate it. See you next time and much gratitude for listening.